guys and ghouls, and welcome to another episode of Fright Mike. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. And today, we're going to go through the trees. We're going to find ourselves. We're going to eat some boys, and maybe some girls. Who knows? Some days <laughs> I like to go both ways. That sounds sexual. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about a movie that is very near and dear to my own heart. Whether or not you feel the same way about this movie as me, we are going to have some fun today. We are talking about 2009's Jennifer's Body. Jennifer's Body came out in 2009. Currently has a 5.3 out of 10 on IMDb. It has a criminal 45% on Rotten Tomatoes. How could you do this? (laughs) Those are such low scores. I know. This movie is so good. Which is a jumping off point, I feel like, to say that this movie is misunderstood. I agree. Like, wholeheartedly. And I, and I, honestly, I'll, I'll admit it, I was, like, I fell victim to the misunderstandings of this movie, because when I, like, like everybody, when we, when they, when the trailer played, I actually rewatched the trailer for this, like, exact reason, like, recently, um, it was, like, marketed to be, like, this, like, sexualizing movie about Megan Fox, and it was, like, to men, <laughs> Yeah. And unfortunately, like, that's, it's not what the movie's about. <laughs> it was the, back in, back in 2009, I remember it was the year I graduated high school. I was a senior. The world was different. Twilight had taken the, the world by storm. So I don't know. But like, it was also like Megan Fox was like the world's like sexiest woman. And like right. everything she was in had to be super sexualized. So of course, they target everyone you know, through the trailers by saying, like, yeah, Megan Fox is super hot, and also she's eating boys, and also she can, you know, like, because I think, at least in one of the trailers, unless I'm remembering this wrong, they include the clip of her saying, I go both ways. Right. So, like, like, they totally objectified her, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. because I saw, I literally, when I, I remember when I saw the trailer and, like, the poster and everything, it was, like, all, like, sexy and everything, and I just, like, eye-rolled so hard until I saw the movie, and I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. Also, just having just rewatched the trailer, they like half the trailer is not even in the movie, and the part where she says the whole um like oh you're, you're eating people I'm not eating people I'm eating boys that wasn't even in the movie I know I know well she I feel like she kind of says it to needy right yeah but like not in the same yeah it's yeah. A different clip but like yeah which which I feel like that's a whole other topic we could discuss um do. I am personally a fan of having clips in the trailer not be in the movie because I feel like it doesn't spoil anything. True. So, like, especially for horror movies, I appreciate when a movie puts different trailer, or, like, and not, I don't want, like, the movie to be totally different than what it is in the trailer. Yeah. That's not what I mean. But, like, with some of the one-liners or maybe yeah. some of the, you know, it's, like, I appreciate that because the whole movie, it's like, oh, they said that line, so obviously this is going to happen. And, like, it kind of takes away from the movie when you see it. Because you're like, oh, yeah, that was in the trailer. Oh, only the good parts of the movie were in the trailer. But I do appreciate, especially in a horror movie, when some of the one-liners or maybe, you know, some of the, like, the quote-unquote, like, lead-up to the kills or, like, whatever. Yeah. I appreciate when they're different. Well, there I can think of actually one example like, somewhat recently of a movie that had something in the trailer that wasn't in the movie, and I was actually disappointed, and that was The Invisible Man, the new one. Yeah. With her, like, staring at the chair. Oh, yeah! And they, like, walk, there's, like, those people that walk in the room, and she's like, I can see him, like, staring at, he's sitting right there. And it wasn't, and it's such a creepy moment in the trailer, and they don't have it in the movie at all, and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> same, same movie, the, the poster for the movie is her, you know, with the, oh, the, with the shower, hand the yeah, shower, that wasn't in there either. Oh, the shower, yeah, I yeah. I, and it makes you think, like, okay, because I, mm, I have the DVD, I watched all the deleted scenes, and now I'm struggling to remember if it was a deleted scene or not. But, I, think I, so. I think... I think you mentioned that, even. I think I might have. But, like, I, I do agree. Like, it sucks when a good scene, like, a creepy part like that is not in the movie. But also, with the handprint scene not being in the movie, but being in the trailer, I kind of liked it. Because I'm like, I get it from the trailer. Yeah. I get the, you know, 
the whole the movie as a whole also and I'm not like so with the shower scene you're like oh this was in the trailer I'm waiting for the hand waiting for the hand and it doesn't happen and something else happens instead and it just completely throws you and you're like oh oh shit what I the hell is this? Expecting this right it's totally <laughs> brand new to me so yeah it can, it can go both ways it has ups and downs but I do 100% agree with you I think half of the reason this movie flopped the way that it did back in 2009 is because of the marketing. Also, like, most of the people that probably saw this initially when it came out were men. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, like, the women missed out. <laughs> the and, girls missed out. And, well, in this movie, too, it's got a female director, Diablo Cody, right. who, if I'm not mistaken, also directed movies like Juno. Well, she wrote it. She wrote it. it. And then Karen Kusama was the Oh, that's right, that's right. It. Yes. But, like... You are correct. And I love Diablo Cody's, like, writing. I think that, like, oh. the dialogue, even in, like, Juno, was so, like, witty... And I, like, love her style, so to have them both work together is, oh, it's so good. It feels very, like, her dialogue feels very authentic, too, just because it is so, like, weird. Like, yeah. there are so many lines in this movie that I use in my own personal, like, daily life. Like, yeah. when she's like, you're just jello, Chip. Yeah, you're lime green jello, and you don't even realize. Like, I say <laughs> that shit all the time, because it's like, like, I remember I saw this twice in the theater. And the first time I heard it, I was like, Nobody talks like that. It cut to me a week later at school, like, you're lime green jello. Like, oh, I fucking talk like this now. <laughs> well, it makes it more quotable, too. It does. Because how many people after Juno, even Juno came out, were quoting that movie, like, nonstop? I know. You know? But that's what makes it good. Like, that, it, when you have a good movie that you can quote all the time like that, with those, like, memorable off-the-wall lines. Yeah. Ugh. Whether you like to admit it or not, same thing happened with Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, yeah. That, oh my god. You want to talk about a fucking movie. Jesus Christ. That movie was so awful the first time I saw it. And then, like, it's just, it's the quotes that make it good. And then you're like, oh, I can appreciate this. I mean, now it's not a good movie, I don't think. There are parts of it that I still like, but... Well, that was, like, a whole moment. It was a movement. I mean, like, all of Hot Topic had, like, vote for Pedro shit all over it. Yeah. (laughs) Tina, you fat lord. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh. I, I can't. Your mom goes to college. I feel like I never saw any Jennifer's Body merch. <laughs> I didn't either, and I'm disappointed. I would love a low shoulder shirt. <laughs> right. I'm very into that. A banty. That. Yes. Uh, I'm here for it. A bumper Speaking sticker. Speaking of low shoulder, fucking Adam Brody, man. Making another, <laughs> like, appearance on our podcast. <laughs> With his smarm face. Oh my god. I, I think it was the perfect him. choice. You I know. know. Like, it was crazy when I was, like, when I was a teenager, everybody was, what was he on, like, the OC? I think it? so. So I never watched any of that. Like, no. It was not for me. It was not my my, my thing. But, so I, w- I always was like, oh, he's one of those, like, OC teen dream people. And, but now that I'm, like, I see him in, like, other movies, like, Ready or Not, and, like. The Ring. The Ring and Jennifer's Body. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this guy is looking awesome. Queen icon legend. <laughs> he's like, great in Ready or Not, and he's like fucking great in this. <laughs> yes, I, I, he's got the perfect smarm face. Oh, I know. Oh my god, and like, he's I, such a dick in I, both movies. I fucking die every time, like when Needy's like. Or I guess, I don't even know if she hears this part, but, like, we just show, like, the band before they play at Melody Lane, and he's talking to the guitarist, and he's like, do you want to do this forever, playing bullshit shows at, like, shitty bars, or do you want to be awesome and rich, like that guy from Maroon 5? (laughs) He's such a dick. (laughs) Um, He's like, Maroon 5. He's like, exactly. And then he looks over to the other guy, he's like, what the fuck? (laughs) Oh my god, he's just, when he starts singing, oh my god, I don't even remember, is the fucking 8675309 song. Oh yeah. Before he stabs her, like, oh, you're such a dick, oh, you are such a dick. I know. But I love him. I know, he's great. Yeah. He's great. I'm happy he was in the movie more. Although, one of the things I question in this movie is why they stuck around for so long. (laughs) Like, afterwards. What do you mean? Like, so, okay, they came for the virgin. Yeah. Got it, got it, yeah. Got the virgin, and then got their fame, but why did they stay in in town? They didn't. They were, like, busy they, touring, and at the end, they were just, like, on a, on a world tour. It just happened to be, like, in their area. But, like, they stayed enough to, to perform again. Remember? They were like, oh, we're doing the, the school's anthem. 
Yes, yeah. Well, so I'm like, why did they, why, they, they got what they wanted, why did they stay? I think it was because, like, the, that was a song that they played at the bar, and because of the tragedy, or, you know, like, the loss of life, it became, like, this, the town's anthem. So they're like, yeah, we'll do it. We're gonna It'll be, like, this. a charity <laughs> thing. Yeah, all 3% of the proceeds will go to charity. So, that, right. honestly, but I agree, like. But they were doing this selfishly, so I'm just surprised. Yeah. It feels out of character for them to have stayed. It's such, it's such a, like, mood thing, but, like, yeah, I was just like, how come they stuck around? But yeah. I'm glad they did. Gotta do what you gotta do. To make it big like Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> And all the guy liner I appreciate. So much guy liner. So many, like, crescent moon tattoos. Uh, oh, yeah, and they all had it. It's so cute. They had, like, matching band tattoos. Yup. And I've seen this movie so many fucking times. I can't even tell. So, like, they have the crescent moon tattoos. And then Needy in her bedroom has a crescent moon. Very, I mean, all crescent moons, like, look the same. But, like, has a crescent moon looking very similar to their tattoos. Yeah. I... In when uh, Needy is playing pinball while Jennifer's getting them shots and she overhears the band, she's playing a pinball machine and it's the name of the pinball machine is Fire and the bar catches on fire. Ah! Like, ah, ah, ah. And then in the beginning Shit. of the movie, you know how it shows Needy and like the, they put her in like solitary and then that song plays and she's like, I hate this song. It's oh, through yeah. the trees. Yeah. The mall, Man. you know, like the the mall version. All the fucking connections. <laughs> I know, I know. This movie is great, and I just feel like it didn't. It came out in a time. It was ahead of its time, and it was underappreciated. Oh, yeah, sure. It was, and it. The thing that's sad though, too, is like the people who didn't see this right away. Like I feel like they missed out because, like we said, it was mismarketed in a way to be this like movie that it's not. Like it's literally. Like, a movie for girls. Absolutely. Like, anyone could tell you. Like, I had, like, toxic girl friendships. Like, I've had it before. So, like, I could, like, relate to this movie. Like, you can, you, like, know. Yeah. It's like they're undoing. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the under, the dark underlines of, like, girl world and, like, yeah. friendship. Especially, like, when one of you is, like, better looking than the other and more popular than the other. But maybe the other one is more well-liked by your class. You know, it's like... Because Needy is lovable, you know, and, like, she gets along with Colin, and she's, you know, like, she's got friends, but, like, Jennifer is, like, the one everyone lusts after, and, like, everyone would do anything for, and it's, like, you've, I've definitely been part of, like, relationships like that. Yeah, like, that dynamic where, and it's always, like, strange, like, you know, they had that, like, they call it, like, the sandbox love for each other, because they're so different. They're literally, like, opposites. Yeah. You know, which is pointed out multiple times in the movie. You know, how many times did Chip say, like, you're nothing like her, like, you guys have nothing in common. So, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a huge thing in the movie. It's friendship for convenience sake because you've been friends this long. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. No, this movie does, like, a great job pointing that stuff out. Yeah. You but, got a you got a good point. It is it's made by women for women. It is, and all the men in the movie are the ones who are objectifying. Yeah, for <laughs> poor sure. Poor Megan Fox, and that's the thing is like, so this movie came out, and then like I know she was in like Transformers. I don't know if it came out before or yeah. after this one, and then it was like the same thing was happening then, and then I feel like she kind of disappeared because she got like like the the sex symbol icon in Hollywood as being like you know yeah she. You know, she's just the, like, sex symbol in all the movies. Right. It's almost like they didn't realize, like, they, they don't care about her talent. They were like, yeah, we need someone hot, and then you're going to do it. And, like, I know she had talked a lot about, like, especially issues on set of Transformers and, like, yeah. you know, yeah. just the bullshit that women go through in Hollywood, especially when you're deemed, like, a sex symbol, like Megan right. Fox is, you know, when you're just, like, overtly sexy and everyone, you know, it's, like, that whole garbage. So I do feel bad, because I, whether or not you agree, I like Megan Fox. I like her, too, and I think she was really good in this movie. And mm-hmm. I think but because she was seen as, like, just a, a pretty face, that she probably missed out on a lot yeah. of opportunities of movies that she could have done i mean she's like she has such like witty sharp dialogue in this movie and she delivers it really well i think and i think she's got like a good sarcastic sense of humor whether or not that was like part of the well-written dialogue but i think she has like a or like the script but i think she brings it to life and i think she even pokes fun at herself in this movie you know even with her saying 
things like, you know, why would a guy, I've never had a problem with guys asking me out before, like, when she finally gets, like, you know, the de- <laughs> demon yep. eyes. <laughs> yup. Like, she pokes on it herself, and she has pictures of herself and her on her dresser <laughs> she sure does oh my god like she's poking fun at herself and her own like vanity and it's it's uh well like the first time we see her looking like garbage so like she turns into a demon she feeds and then like a month goes by and she looks like shit and she's like i look like boo boo my hair is dull and lifeless like i'm breaking out it's like i'm one of the normal girls right so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so she's like yeah she's poking fun at herself and it's yeah. like ugh. Yeah. I know. I know. So good. She's having a comeback in a big way, though. This year, 2021, has been the year of Megan Fox, and I am here for it 100%. I know. And she's she, living her she best. She has her new movie, Till Death, which I still have yes. to check out. I really do want to watch it. Yes. It just came out. I heard it was really good. I can't wait. I, know. I cannot wait. Well, let's jump into the world of Devil's Kettle and Jennifer's Body. Oh, yes. Let's get into it. <laughs> we start off with Needy Less Nikki. She's in a mental institution. We're not quite sure why. I mean, like, we can assume why. Um, but she's labeled as a kicker. She gets into, <laughs> she gets herself into some trouble over toastums, uh, knocks some teeth out, and gets set into solitary confinement. And then we kind of, She, like, know. recounts how everything came yes. to be up to this point. Like Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> So we get um, in a little, a nice little flashback moment of the entire rest of the movie. Yes, yes. They live in Devil's Kettle. Uh, her and Jennifer have been best friends, BFFFFFs, since the sandbox, like you said. Um, Megan Fox is on color guard. She's not a cheerleader. She's waving that flag around. And Needy's <laughs> in the fucking bleachers like, <laughs> I don't know. Like mascot. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, their friendship definitely, like, borders, like, like crush status oh yeah well definitely on needy's end i think yeah and i think they i mean they definitely explore that later they in sure the movie do. but like do. i think it's definitely an undertone like right off the bat yeah the way that she looks at her and then the other girl the uh, i don't know i don't remember what her name is but the other girl that's like sitting right by needy is like yo you're giving her like googly eyes yeah you guys <laughs> like, are they totally know. lesbian gay <laughs> okay thanks for your input appreciate your input right it's very 2009 so like yeah it's definitely like present in yeah. the movie which is like a whole other thing right so we also meet chip who is um needy's boyfriend played he's by johnny got, simmons he's got the swoopy hair he does oh my god his hair looks like a helmet the 2000 swoopy hair yeah um young neil from fucking the scott pilgrim oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but essentially like we're just kind of like meeting them and like get their dynamic jennifer comes to see needy at her locker and it's like where's something cute tonight we're going out and uh they go to a bar they go see a band called low shoulder who jennifer follows on myspace they're super <laughs> hot love the myspace <laughs> not mention. yes uh which so like jennifer goes to pick up um needy from her house and like chip is over there and she's driving her mom's sebring convertible <laughs> and she like walks in and she's like it smells like thai food in here have you been fucking oh. <laughs> i remember i remember the first time i saw this in theater i was like this fucking sucks this dialogue's weird but like it, at the end of the movie you're like oh it's just it, it is what it is it sticks with it. with it yeah it sticks yeah. with you it gets better <laughs> this well and the second time i saw it i was like it's not like time fan here but like uh. in a, like i was into it then because i knew what it was about yeah but so they go to melody lane which is like white trash it is a dive bar yeah i love how it's like noted Oof. as at, like throughout the movie as a night the, the hot nightclub in town it's like a fucking roadside dive bar. yes after the fire goes down who uh, somebody says it was a white trash pig roast <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh so yeah they got like pinball machines uh we chris pratt makes a surprise appearance oh, yeah. as the cop who gave jennifer anal that one time oh. and then she sat in a bag of frozen peas because she's gonna go to flex <laughs> so thanks for that his name's roman he's a cop officer roman <laughs> yes a cop in training yeah uh she gets them some 9-11 shooters very uh <laughs> controversial is what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> is what it is and then uh you know the band before they play, you know, Needy is talking to them, or, like, overhears them talking, like, hey, dude, are you sure she's a virgin? We need a virgin, and blah, 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 and she's, like, Needy's, like, oh, hell no, they're gonna try to fuck my best friend. 
you know, they th- she thinks that they're, like, just dirty scumbags. Oh, and she's yeah. like, for your information, she is a virgin, and she would never do creeps like you. And they were like, fuck, yes, she's a virgin. And we got her. <laughs> yeah. So then they play their song through the trees. A fire is started, just, you know, mysteriously. And the whole bar goes up, and Jennifer and Needy manage to, like, escape through the bathroom window where they meet the band outside and they're like by their like creepy van their rapey van yeah and I, they're just like so casual they're like oh my god thank god you guys made it out we yeah. were so worried about you they're so creepy they're like oh we'll take you away to a safer place and needy you know all of her red flags are 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 raised at this point because she's like uh yeah no we're good but even like before they get out jennifer's like in a trance yeah she's already like smitten mm-hmm. <laughs> into this whole thing and she's just like no no we'll go with them and yeah no which is like oh my god it's like it's like re- like revisiting high school or like junior high when you watch like your girlfriends do something stupid like i've definitely been there and like you just know like oh fuck <laughs> you can feel the atmosphere the like oh, you fuck. Know, exactly you know exactly what <laughs> it feels like uncomfortable like horrible like you're about to make a bad decision yup yeah especially like like you said oh my god it especially pertains to like the high school area or like high school era of life yeah because now that we're older i can't say that i feel it as you know like you know i mean i still don't talk to strangers right no i i talk to strangers even less than i did before for for other reasons yeah socially (laughs) yeah but like i other than like watching your friend get like way too drunk it's yeah. Those are the only bad decisions I see anyone making anymore. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, you don't have to worry about your 16-year-old friend going off with these, like, college guys. Mm-hmm. Or whatever the fuck, yeah. Yeah, so they drive off with her in the back seat. Yeah. There's that moment where, like, the door is closing and they're just, like, looking at each other like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then it cuts to... <laughs> It cuts to uh, Adam Brody just like, like shoulder shrug, oh my God, smart yeah. smile, like hey, we got her, bye. Yeah. Oh my God. And they drive off into the night, and Needy comes home, and she's like, Ugh, you know, like upset, obviously. And then we hear like How'd a she noise. Get home? Did she take her mom's Jennifer's mom Sebring? Does she have the keys? On? Oh no, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. She gets home. Uh, and then we hear, like, a noise, and it is late at night, and it, it's a dark house, and no one ever bothers to turn a goddamn light on. Nope. Uh, but the fridge light is on, because the door's open, and Jennifer is digging through that thing like a fucking animal. <laughs> like a rabid raccoon in a dumpster behind Chili's. Uh. And she she's looking all kinds of fucked up, and she just, like, uh, like I don't even, growls. Yeah. Right? She's like, ah! Yeah. Oh, my God. When they show, she's like, she's digging the chicken. Yes. See, that's the good thing. That's another thing I wanted to talk about was how, like, so, obviously, we, we discussed, like, Megan Fox being, like, objectified and, like, the whole thing about her being, like, a sex symbol, but she does, like, a really good job at making herself not look good in this movie. Yeah. Like, she rips the rotisserie chicken out of the fridge. It, like, flies on the floor, and she's like, ah, and, like, a rabbit. <laughs> she's got, like, meat hanging out of her mouth, and she's, like, looking some kind of way <laughs> yeah oh and then she pukes up this like the sludge prickly yeah it's like prickly black sludge and then it's all in her teeth and then she just like smiles uh, at needy and it's honestly, so creepy though, the, yeah the smile with like the blood on her teeth is Ugh. the creepiest thing ever. i hate it, it lingers too long and i'm just like oh god wow. i know and it's like dark like just dark enough yeah, like with the light hitting her face it's it, it's a creepy moment for sure. It's probably the scariest moment of the whole fucking movie. Oh, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then she, like, grabs Nini and she's like, are you scared? And Nini's like, yes. <laughs> I would have pissed my pants probably. Oh, for sure. Uh, but then she just leaves and yeah. Nini's like, uh. <laughs> the fuck? Okay. <laughs> but then the next day, she, like, sees her in class. I think she's still a little shook because, like, she just has this, like, spaced out, like, look at her face. And Jennifer comes into school as if nothing happened, looking completely normal. Yep, like super hot. Like even super hotter than hot, before. Glowing. Like <laughs> literally radiating. I just I don't I don't understand. And like Needy's like, what the hell? And like shows her like her dark black nails from like scrubbing like on her hands and knees that like black prickly shit. And she was like, Oh my god, you need a mani petty bad. And it's just like such a bitch. And then they're they're talking about the tragic loss of life. 
of all the students and teachers that died at the Melody Lane, fi- you know, and all just, like, the town members. And, uh, they're, like, including Senorita Gomez, and Jennifer's, like, oh, no way, she ate shit. Like, (laughs) just, like, super does not care. No fucks to give. No fucks to give. Uh, Uh, and then after that, we get one of my favorite shots of the movie. We get Jonas. Oh, my God, yeah. So she then attacks Jonas, who also lost one of his teammates. He's the football player. He is, He's a yeah. football player, yeah. She, it, and it's, like, such a cool shot because, like, it's, like, the camera zooms in. Like, he's on the football field, and it's zooming in really fast with, like, this heavy metal playing. And, like, when it gets to, like, right up in his face, he looks to the left, and you see Jennifer, like, off in the distance walking, like, towards him. And then he looks forward, and then immediately, like, not even a second later, she's on his right. So the complete opposite side. She's like, hi, Jonas! It's, oh my god, it's just so fucking great. Yeah. And she, like, gra- you know, like, grabs his hand. She's like, fe- you know, puts it on her tit, essentially. She's like, feel my heart. It's broken. You know, your best friend Craig, he said that you and I would make a banging couple. And he's like, Craig said that? Yeah, <laughs> you want to go in the woods and bang? It's such a good scene, too. Because, so she leads him into the into the woods, and immediately is like they're like making now and you know she's like got fucked to give him a blowy <laughs> yeah and all like meanwhile like it gets real quiet and all like the forest animals like are gathering around like some I fucked love, up snow like, white i was gonna, just gonna say that like fucking <laughs> snow white it's wild oh. and she was like do you miss your friend craig and he's like yeah and she's like well you're gonna see him real soon he's like what you mean like in heaven one day and she's like no and oh then, god the teeth the <laughs> teeth she fucking unhinges her jaw at like the at the neck it's like, just like <laughs> it's a wide like a venus fly trap it's great it's insane and like her teeth are real sharp and her, her eyes get like black it's oh it's creepy it's amazing so that when they discover his body he's just like ripped to shreds <laughs> oh it's it's a fucking and like the wild animals are picking at his insides oh, man. and then doesn't it like oh my god i don't remember if it's his mom I think it's his parents. They're like, he looked like lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nasty. <laughs> and then I think, like, after that, it's like a month goes by. So, like, you know, it shows the town and they, they've suffered so much tragedy. And that's this is when you, like, get that backstory of, like, you know, Low Shoulders song Through the Trees is, like, the unofficial anthem of the town, and they have, like, fucking candlelight vigils they and have, shit. Like, they I, th- I think they were, like, marking them as, like, heroes because they had allegedly, like, pulled people out of the burning the burning building, and <laughs> Needy's just like, what the fuck? And she's like, ah, uh, that did not happen. I was there. <laughs> yeah, and I like the, the girl, the same girl that was like, you guys are lesbian gay. She turns and she's got, like, a Low shoulder shirt, and she was like, they're heroes, Needy. She's like, no, they're not. And she goes, it's true. It's on their Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma'am, sit down. Must be true. Right. So we see Jennifer looking like shit, like truly, like just like scraggly, greasy hair. She needs to feed. Yeah, she's, her, she's got breakouts. Her, she's just like real pale and gross, like no makeup. And, uh... She's like, it just must be wearing off or something. And Needy's like, what's wearing off? And she doesn't say anything. And I was like, ooh, okay. But then we meet Colin. Love who, Colin. he was in, you know, he's he's a horror movie vet. He was in, um, what's his name? Something Gallagher. Um, but he was in Haunting in Connecticut. He was in the really awful Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Yeah. But he's cute. He is cute. I like him. Always the goth boy. <laughs> I know. Sweet boy. And he like talks to Needy and then he's like, Hey Jennifer, uh, do you want do you wanna go out w- with me sometime? Uh they're playing Rocky Horror at the Bijou <laughs> and she's like, I don't like boxing movies. And he's like, It's not a never mind. Fucking boxing movie. Okay, never mind. And it's so fucking awkward. Yeah, that's when like you said where she was like yeah, I'm used to boys asking me out. She was like, he listens to Maggot Rock. He wears, like, eyeliner. My dick is bigger than his. Just, like, shitting all over this poor kid. But then she says yes. Yeah, but well, it she... is really weird, though, too, because, like, everybody is confused as to why he's actually asking her out because, like, there was no interest up to this point. <laughs> right. Well, I think it's because, like, Jennifer is, like, right. the hot girl. Right. But it's... She wasn't at this moment, though. <laughs> right. Well, and it's, like, that weird... Like, they keep focusing on this, like this connection between jennifer and needy it seems like whatever needy 
likes Jennifer has to have, which is, like, again, like a toxic girl thing, okay. you know, like, and it, you know, it's, like, very mean girls as well. Like, oh, you want him? Well, no, I'm going to have him. Right. Because Needy's like, I like Colin. And she was like, you do? And then she's like, hey, Colin, um, do you want to watch Aqua Marine at my house tonight? It's about a girl who's half sushi. I think she has <laughs> sex with, like, a blowhole or something. <laughs> And he's like, what oh, okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, I'll text you my address. And then she's, like, all up on chip shit, too, because he's Needy's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, So, Colin. I, I, his death really is, like, tragic. Because, it's sad. So she gives him her address. And wink, it's, wink. like, yeah, it's basically, like, a housing development, like, a... Like a house under, yeah, like a house under construction. And, like, for him to get even farther in that house that he did, like, I I would... Because she was, like, upstairs. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone And he in. was, like, going through, like, the construction zone. It didn't even see anything right away. It was, oh, my God. Whatever. It's, it's, it's not important. But, yeah, so he gets upstairs and everything is, like, lit with all these candles around. And she's just so creepy when she's standing behind him in the background luring him there uh and i like that they're playing i want to fuck you by Aton. <laughs> but also i feel like this this really like tells you how either a desperate or b naive colin is because mm-hmm. had that been me like had a boy i really like been like i'll text you my address and i pulled up to a neighborhood that is not finished and all the houses are like under construction still still being built i would have been like okay he's fucking pranking me like right. this was all a joke they're probably watching me from one of these houses laughing their ass off and they're gonna tell everyone at school the next day and i would have turned my ass around and left yeah not him mm-hmm. he goes into the house he yeah wanders through why why the fuck would you do that <sighs> because i know i don't know <laughs> and then she's like let's play mommy and daddy but then she eats his insides. Ooh, and it's so good because oh, she like scooping. she's like, I need you frightened. I need you hopeless. And then her eyes get all crazy. Yeah, and then like you just see like the shadow on the wall. It's such an emo thing. It is. Oh, and like yeah, like you said, she's like scooping his blood out of his insides. Yeah, it's such a good shot when she's like scooping it out of his stomach. And she's like squatted over it, like literally like a feral animal. Oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, we how could I forget the the iconic Jennifer swim scene i think that was after she eats jonas when she goes for like a swim in the lake and her body like her her body is literally like steam is coming off because she's just she's fucking hot yeah literally and from the feed (laughs) right right just from her like demon status yeah but also physically Mm -hmm. you know uh so so poor colin and and meanwhile while this is happening let's just say this is like such a weird (laughs) A weird parallel. <laughs> this is a really weird parallel. Because, um, Ch- Chip's pa- Needy's parent, Chip's parents are out of town. So, like, they go, like, they're at his house and they're banging. And he's got, like, I don't know, like, lime green condoms or I don't know. I don't remember what the deal is. The swirl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the swirl. <laughs> um, so they're having sex and Needy, so, like, it's missionary, it's boring. And, like, Needy sees, like, blood on the ceiling and then she sees like jennifer and like jonas and like like, in the corner yeah and like is having visions and like can i don't know if she can like see colin die but i think she can feel it like feel it happening because that's the whole other thing about that like so in that moment that like connection that has kind of been there all along is now like confirmed basically because now she can like sense when something is going on with jennifer and it's all i feel like it's Excuse me. It's, like, all part of this, like, BFF necklace that they have, because they're both wearing it, and at the end, when she rips it off, is when, like, Jennifer seems to lose her power. Right. Which is, like, kind of random, I feel like. Right. I don't know. Because it has nothing really to do with the possession aspect. I wonder, like, I wonder if there's some sort of weird, like, energy connection, because there's that, like, unrequited love that, that seems to be there, like, on Needy's end. And maybe even a little on Jennifer's end, too, because obviously, like, this whole, like, give-and-take relationship that they have, like, it serves both of them a purpose. Like, Needy is basically Jennifer's slave and will do whatever, but Jennifer also has this, like, weird connection to Needy, you know? And, like, when she's telling the story about 
what happened to her that night she went with those guys she was like yeah they they stabbed me uh and then she's like and the next thing I know like I woke up and I didn't know what I was doing I just knew that I needed to come back to you and that's why she went to her house and that she could never bring herself to hurt her exactly so it's this it's this weird yeah like connection yeah so needy is like freaking out she's like oh my god but of course they're having sex so chip's like what's wrong am i too big like he really thinks he's like such a fucking stud but no and so like he leaves or she leaves and almost hits jennifer like on the way home like with her car she just jumps out on the street like a fucking deer yeah and she's like on the hood of her car and again she gets that like creepy smile uh, but then Needy gets home, and Jennifer's there, and she looks great. She looks fantastic. She's wearing an Evil Dead baseball tee. I love the baseball tee. <laughs> I know. She looks very cozy in her undies and her socks. And uh, Needy and Jennifer start making out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's when it kind of goes back to the whole, like, bisexuality thing, and which is, like, a whole other thing in this movie. Right. You're exploring with your girlfriends right right so that's when we get like the whole backstory of what happened to jennifer like she got picked up by those guys in the van uh and i love again i just love adam brody so much in this movie because she's like are you guys like i forget what she says but she's like are you guys like gonna kill me or are you gonna rape me and adam brody just goes you don't have to talk if you don't want to (laughs) just like shut the fuck up um but she's like yeah um I, I, yeah, I am a virgin. Like, I don't even do sex. I don't know how. So you should probably find someone else who does, right? Like, just completely misunderstanding the situation. <laughs> the fact that she said do sex. <laughs> yeah, I don't even do sex. I don't, I don't even know how. <laughs> Which we know she's not even a backdoor virgin anymore. Thanks to Roman. <laughs> <laughs> so they take her to this, like, waterfall that they talked about in the beginning where it's basically, like, a hole that scientists have dropped things down to see, like, where it comes out, and they haven't found the other side of it, basically. The pit of hell. Exactly. <laughs> so, they take her there. They do some ritual that they got offline. <laughs> yeah, they put it up the Google page. <laughs> <laughs> so, they recite this very legit, like, ritual and sacrifice Jennifer to the devil as they sing 8675309. And they do it all in the name of getting their indie rock band fame. <laughs> Absolutely. Low shoulder. Um, but it didn't work because she's not a virgin. So when she woke up, she found the, oh my God, was it like a transfer student? Not transfer oh, student. Yeah. Like the. The guy from India. Yeah. The foreign exchange student. Uh, Ahmed? I don't remember his name. But uh, she was like, oh my God, you made it out. Does anyone know you're alive? Or, like, do your, do your like, host family know you're alive? Does anyone know you're alive? And she's like, and then I don't know. Like, I just went on instinct and I ate him. <laughs> and I felt a lot better. <laughs> so she, like, found out she's got, like, superpowers. And, like, you know, we get, like, the, the, the gif exists online. Like, everywhere. It's, like, her holding the lighter to her tongue. Oh, I know. And then it, like, That's is normal. Good. Yeah. And yeah. she's like, I am a god. Um... <laughs> But she, yeah, she's like, yeah, and then, like, you know, I've just been eating boy, you know, because Needy's like, you're eating people, and she's like, I'm not eating people, I'm eating boys. boys. Yeah. Hello? And she just, it's it sucks because, so Needy's really the only one that, like, notices anything is going down, because then she confides in Chip, like, I think the next day, about the whole thing, and like, she's like, she's not just, like... Is this the line where she goes, it's not, she's not just high school evil, she's actually evil? Yeah, she's evil. Yeah, I know. No, like, evil evil. Not high school but evil. But he, like, already thinks she's going crazy because she's the only one that, like, sees what's going on, unfortunately. Yeah. And then I feel bad for Chip because, like, so we've got, like, the dance, you know, like, the school dance the coming up, the formal. And, you know, it's through the trees themed and... Of course. You know, gen- like, I feel like... Yeah, of course. Because low shoulders performing. Of course they are. Of course they are. It's the town that gave them the fame that they were looking for. And they're giving back. They're giving back. And uh, it's it's so sad because Needy's like, I can't, like, I have to, like, break up with you, essentially, to protect you. 
you know. She doesn't want him to go to the dance because I think they even say in the movie it's going to be like a fucking all-you-can-eat buffet of boys for Jennifer to eat. <laughs> exactly. So she's like, yeah, I'm not going to go to the fucking dance with you, Chip. But he goes anyway. I know. And it's like, oh, that's another good scene. Like, I feel like there's so many good, like, shots of jennifer like the background shit like you know like with jonas in the field and like just like this scene so needy is wearing this ugly she just looks like shit she looks like she's straight out of like 1985 i was gonna say it's very josie grossy it's very 16 candles yes (laughs) yes like what is up with the puffy sleeved hot pink moment that she's, she's wearing <laughs> right her fucking hair is crimp she's just missing braces and like an egg to the face like fucking it made me question like a prayer plane. when this movie actually takes place yeah it, honestly the whole the whole fashion in this movie makes me wonder that too <laughs> because i'm like i didn't even think about that like obviously it came out in 2009 but i'm like did i miss something about when this actually took place because holy shit even jennifer's dress is I mean, it's, like, long, but she's got those, the, like, the gloves. Yeah, on. yeah. And, like, it seems, like, it seems current because they have cell phones, there's MySpace, right. you know, like, there's all this shit, but it almost does kind of, like, not not as good as It Follows because It Follows is, like, a truly ambiguous time right. period, but it almost and they feels... they stick with that for the whole time. Right. But it almost feels like they're, like, kind of verging into that territory. Right. But you then know? they give those nods, so you're like, oh, okay, so it is, like, the 2000s. Right. But then it's like, what's up with the dress? I know the fashion is, and maybe it's that weird. maybe it speaks less to an ambiguous time period and more like small town. Maybe you because know? the other thing that gave away the whole two thousands vibe was when I think is when they were going out to the bar and Needy's wearing the tank top over the shirt and I'm like, oh god, <laughs> yeah, I remember when that was a trend. Yeah, and then Chip says, "I could see your womb," but I thought that was more nineties. I could be wrong. I don't know, but it's ugly yeah. either way. Either, either way, hurt. yeah. But it, it is so, such a random thing that I'm just like, oh my god. And her hair. Oh. I know. Yikes. And you see, like, Jennifer, she looks like shit because she hasn't fed. And she's, like, literally smearing ten pounds of foundation on her face with her fucking hands. Yeah. But this is the scene I'm talking about. So, like, Chip is walking to the dance by himself over the river and through the woods in the dark. And you see Jennifer in, like, a white floor-length, like, billowy gown with her black hair and her white gloves. And, like... The dress is, like, billowing, so, like, slow and creepy, and then it just, like, she's real far away, and then all of a sudden, like, no time at all, she's, like, closer, and then she's, like, literally grabbing his shoulder, like I said, like, she just moves so, like, fast and, like, quiet, like, literally, like, prey stalking or like a predator stalking their prey yeah i don't know why it gave me dracula vibes <laughs> for sure for sure like that whole like almost like f- that floating closer and oh yeah it was really good camera work <laughs> no I, i'm i'm here it's for creepy it. it's really creepy it's so good like i, I don't know it's it. more creepy when stuff like that happens where it's like very subtle or when someone is just like moving like really quickly like unnaturally unnaturally toward a camera i don't know which one is creepy but i know creepy. <laughs> i hate oh man i, I hate, hate both. i hate both oh my especially the scene in death becomes her that always gets me with like the oh. fucking nuns just like floating i know <sighs> but even in even in death becomes her when she comes up from the stairs and oh, he's yes. on the phone and she, in the background that scene always creeped me out yeah because we just see it slowly happening. Ooh. I know. It's on it's 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 both though. It's unnatural and it's slow. Right. I love a good background work situation. Ugh. I know. Or like like hereditary. I know. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. So she's like essentially she's like chip, I'm into you. Like let's and you're sad. Let's go make out over there in that in that building over there. And chip's like, "Okay." It's like an abandoned... It looks like a greenhouse on the inside, but I know it's a pool. <laughs> it, well, it does... And you know what? I, I swear to God, if it's not the same building, it's very fucking similar to It Follows, to oh, that I pool. Oh, I know! The, the pool! Yes! Yeah. Was that not the same building? Maybe. You know? It, it looks the goddamn same. It's just very random. It, it, the building is in, like, the middle of a field, and it just it, it's abandoned. There's, like vines growing through the window <laughs> it reminds me so and much in. of like the haunting like that yeah. green room with the pool yeah and, like, all that shit yeah murky ass water mm-hmm. so like needy of course she's like at the dance and she's she got was, her spidey senses <laughs> she does and she's like oh there's jennifer but it's not jennifer and she's like chip's not here jennifer's not here <gasps> and she like takes off and she just knows exactly where to go because you know 
this like you said the, the connection <laughs> yeah the connection so she bursts into this pool and jennifer like t- turns around she's like <laughs> and she's got like the demon mouth and it's real creepy yeah but she's like essentially just like eaten chip and like his neck is all like blah, blah, blah. schmagoggled <laughs> yeah it's, it's a goddamn mess Ugh, and they go swimming in the pool it's like a de- it's like yeah it's a whole f- pool fight scene it is demon. really creepy though when like needy jumps in and she's like trying to get um chip out and then she like they look over and they just see like the water it's like a fucking shark like yeah it's like the water like is rippling towards them and she just fucking pops out Ooh. Just starts levitating. I know. Yeah, she's fucking floating. And I love when Edie is like, it's not even that cool. Right. <laughs> You're such a bit. Or what did she say? Oh, my God. She says something and she was like, nice, uh, nice insult, Hannah Montana. <laughs> so they're like just going back and forth. And she was like, yeah, you were always a bad friend and blah, blah, blah. And like just. They have their final like confrontation with each other. Yeah. And I love, I love when she was like, yeah, like when you had to stay, when you had to eat laxatives to stay skinny. And she's like, I am going to eat your soul and shit it out. <laughs> it's so good. And then it all culminates basically with Jennifer getting stabbed in the stomach by like a. I don't even know what the the pole? A javelin? <laughs> yeah, it's like real long, and she's like, ugh. And she's like, you got a tampon? <laughs> seems like you might be plugging. Plug <laughs> the dialogue she... is so fucking good. I know. I'm like, what? Oh my god. It just likes the casualty of it. Like, you just got railed in the stomach, and you're like, you got a tampon? And she just leaves. Yeah, she just like she fucks just walks up. Out. She just climbs out the window and then Chip dies. I know it's that is really sad. Needy, hell bent on revenge. Uh actually, the scene where we in the beginning, because I know the the scene at the end is also in the beginning yeah. with Jennifer like laying in bed and we just see Needy in the window is also super creepy. Yup, because <laughs> you know window stuff. But yeah, so Needy goes and attacks. Jennifer at home with a box cutter with a box so cutter. much uh, did you like do you get all of your murder weapons at Home Depot <laughs> oh my god that reminds me of that other <laughs> that other it was it when she was with Joe um Joe was it when, when she was with Colin where she was like nice hardware ace. oh yeah oh yeah oh so god good. I all think the, that was Colin all the fucking one liners in this movie I like, know uh, so they're like, you tussling. know, they're tussling. Um, they're tumbling in the air, like literally hovering, and they're fighting and like they're slashing. And Jennifer like scratches Needy and I think like bites her. Um, but then while they're floating is when Needy rips off the BFF necklace and then they just fall really slow, like staring at each other. And then when they're back on the bed is when Needy stabs her with a box cutter and like kills in the her. Heart. And she goes, my tit. <laughs> and he says, no, your heart. And then Jennifer just goes, Ugh. <laughs> 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 It's like so loud. A five minute gargle scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, of course, Jennifer's mom walks in and is like, ah! And, you know, like, needy is, you Cut know. to present. <laughs> yeah. With needy in the uh, correctional facility in, uh, what do they call it? Solitary. Solitary, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, there's like a window real high, you know, it's like 20 foot ceiling type shit. And Needy's like, yeah, so like, I did some research and it turns out like when you've been bitten or scratched by a demon and you live, you don't become a demon, but you get like some of their powers. So she's like meditating and hovering and now she's like window height and she kicks out the window and walks, like, right through the chain link fence like a goddamn cartoon character. <laughs> and um, she hitchhikes. You know, well, she's, like, walking along a street and you find, like, all the little red balls that they had been dropping down that waterfall. And the knife that they used to kill Jennifer. And Needy picks it up. And puts it in a little vest that I don't know where she got from, but she got it. And this, like, man picks her up. And he's like, where are you headed? And she's like, I don't know. I'm headed into town. I'm seeing this band, Low Shoulder. Tonight's their last concert. And then... Fuck yes. Yes. And then before... Well, we we hear the song. So, like, we get Violet by Hole starts to play. Uh, and then the credits start to roll. But then we get, like, the credit, like, cuts. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's so good because... 
we see like the band like basically partying it off after their show in the hotel room but then like like the credits are going and then we just cut to like pictures and it's like crime scene yeah it's real fucking, bloody like all the shit that needy did <laughs> yo and then we see like i think the last shot is uh the camera footage yeah camera footage of needy walking away yeah ba 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 so good it's a revenge story yeah I love that. At the heart of it, it's a revenge story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's Jennifer's good. body. All right, ratings. Five out of five. Well, I, oh, yeah, that means it's a perfect man. I'm going to go 4.85 out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go four and a half out of five. There you go. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's good. I think it's it's a fair score. I, I do love this movie. I really do, too. It's criminally underrated. I feel like it still is. I mean, I know, like, IMDb updates their ratings, you know, as time goes on and the fact that it's been since 2009 it's still only at a 5.3 out of 10 is pretty surprising i know it's disappointing i hope that um people really do give this like if if you're listening to this to like hate listen to it sorry because i like this movie so that's not what you got um but if you've only seen it like i like you know once twice give it another watch if you don't if you didn't like it i i really feel like it's super underrated well, yeah, and I think when it came out, I, if you had only seen it when it came out, watch it again with 2021 thought, eyes. Yeah. Because I think it's different. I think it was before its time, you know, so, sure. and because it was so mismarketed, I feel like a lot of people didn't see it, so I, I would definitely recommend checking it out again. Yeah, for sure. Do yourself a favor. Give it another shot. Give it another go. Uh, I really appreciate all of this movie did uh i don't have enough good things to say about it i use quotes in this movie in my everyday life <laughs> still to this day uh i i don't even know what else to say about it to be honest like that that that's it for me it's if you did, <laughs> that's I everything mean, that's everything i have to say i won't say anymore all right well it looks like you've survived the demon scratch you've made it out with a couple extra superpowers and well, you know what? We're going to go enjoy Low Shoulders' last show tonight. So, <laughs> with all that being said, thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, we hope you enjoy this movie as much as we do. Um, if you don't, give it another watch. 2021 Eyes, Megan Fox has a comeback this year. Fuck yeah. We're all about eating boys and, you know, like, the power of women. Um, but, please. Speaking of the power of women. <laughs> yeah. Please. Check us out. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter at Fright Mike Podcast. We do also have a Patreon. That's right, a Patreon. If you yourself are Tell thinking, me more. <laughs> if you yourself are thinking, wow, I wish I could listen to more episodes of Fright Mike. Well, you can. For <laughs> please go over to patreon.com slash Fright Mike. Fright Mike Podcast. Fright yes. Mike. Yes, Fright Mike Podcast. For all the extra spooky goodies over there. I know we did, we're, you know, the movies are open now, the theater's by us, so we're doing more recent movie reviews over there, um, and then we do have a Patreon exclusive coming this month for you guys. Uh, also, please leave us a five-star review. That's right, five-star review. Not four. four. <laughs> not four, not four and a half. A five-star review, and a nice little comment, wherever you can. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm not plugging for today. I know. Sorry, I am so awkward. So, until next time, I'm Sam. I'm Liz. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace.